Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we're going to make a beautiful bracelet using products from the Adornable Elements Beads of the Month Club for February 2023 and I will link the unboxing for that in the description box below this video if you would like to check it out you can but um, we're going to make a bracelet so first of all our encouraging word for today take your time to make your soul happy. That's important that we take care of ourselves. Okay, so um, the things you're going to need are some bead stringing wire. This is seven strand bead stringing wire. Uh, I think it's bright silver or just silver. It just says silver color. So seven strand bead stringing wire. I'm using silver. This toggle clasp is from the box this month. We're going to use it. I have two crimp bead covers and two two by two crimp tubes. Now, these covers are big. They're um, maybe four millimeter, but I'm going to use them on these because that's all I've got. <laughs> um, you're going to need head pins and eye pins. We're going to use these uh, really pretty octagonal beads is what they called them. I've also heard them called cathedral beads, but I think they're super pretty. These eight millimeter fire polish, we're going to use them. We'll be using these four millimeter milky white fire polish rounds. We will be using these beautiful AB coated drops. We will be using the Labra Labrador full Labrador silver um, three millimeter fire polish rounds. We'll be using the six millimeter Alexandrite fire polish rounds and the Rondell Alexandrite fire polish. So um, those are all the beads that we're going to use. And then I have some chain here. So this is a very fine, fine, fine link. There we go, chain with some little sequin type things on it. You can use any chain that you have. Um, you can use any beads that you have for this. You do not have to use the same sizes as me or the same beads as me either. Just any beads work for this. When I saw this box, I knew this is what I wanted to do with it because I just thought all the beads looked so pretty together and they were so delicate. The colors were just very delicate and I knew this, I just thought this would be really pretty, this design. So that's why I'm doing this. And you're gonna need a bead bug. And let me pull out my bead bug. I didn't pull out my bead bug, here it is. This just keeps me from losing um, the beads off the end of my, <laughs> my tiger tail. Or <laughs> They have these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, just about anywhere. Okay, any craft store. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is you need to cut your chain in different varying lengths. So that's what I've done here. I've cut some as much as, you know, three or four inches, and then probably nothing smaller than three inches. I've gone three to maybe four inches um, with my chain, and I've cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces, just varying lengths. And then I have created a bunch of loops, and I'm going to show you how I, or a little uh, connectors, beaded connectors. I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, so I have a bunch of head or eye pins, and the ones that we are using at the top will need to have the eye pin loop on them. So eye pins for all these top ones, you'll need head pins for your bottoms. And I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows. 11 long dangles, and I've just varied it. There's no pattern there. I've just picked up beads and tried to vary it um, in length and in the types of beads. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I make my loops. I was actually using the one step looper, and I'm gonna show you with it and without it. So that way you know how to do both. So this is just the little, another little bead dangle. This is one of the bottoms that I'm gonna do because it's on a head pin. You wanna make sure you put your bottoms on the head pin because you don't want anything dangling down here, okay? Everything else should be eye pins, but your bottom will be head pins. And to do this, you put your beads on and you just insert it in here and you put the wire through this little hole on the end. See, it looks just like that. And I get this down fairly close to the bead. You don't wanna go much closer or it will crack it. And then you just squeeze it and then I Pull it back a little bit like that and it makes a little loop now this is not my favorite tool i don't really the loops that it makes are a lot of times um not 
really, they're not closed and they're not necessarily the rounded type that I like. So I don't know. It's an okay tool if you're making this many loops. I obviously used it today because I was making a ton of loops, but I prefer to do them by myself. And this is how I do that. I take my, here's my little link on here. Okay. Come on camera. And I just bend this 90 degrees right above the bead, just like that. And I take my cutter and a little less than my finger's width is usually where I cut it. So it's about that long. And then I take my round nose plier and I just roll back my loop. And I like my own loops way better than the loops that the one step looper makes. Okay. So that's another bottom. So now all of my dangles here have bottoms on them, which are with head pins. And then they're just varying lengths with the wire in between. I have my bead bug on this end. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and string this up. And I wanna use a mixture of these I think I want to use these. Do I want to use these? I can't decide if I want to use these eight millimeters and the cathedral beads or just the cathedral beads. I think I'm just going to use the cathedral beads. So I'm going to take one and string it on. Okay. Now what I've got to do I, before, actually, before you do this, you need to hook all these together and I have neglected to do that. But what we need to do is hook all of our pieces together. So I've got my cathedral bead on there. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to hook these together. And it's totally up to your own creative control how uh, long you want to make these dangles and how many that you want to be on there. You can put way more than I am. You can put less than I am. It's just totally what you like. And I know this is not the kind of bracelet you're going to wear to work, like when you're working on a computer keyboard or something. But it's really pretty for dressy, like an evening out or something. It's really pretty. And they're, they're pretty noticeable. I get a lot of compliments when I wear the, these kind of bracelets. So I'm going to actually do two cathedral beads at the beginning. Then I'm going to hang this link right on here. Okay. Just like that. I am going to do my chain piece. This is a teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny fine chain. I think it will go right on this bead stringing wire, but I was actually kind of glad to use it in this project because I wasn't sure what else I would do with it. <laughs> it's, the links are so small, but it's so pretty. There we go, it will go on there. I'm just gonna hang it directly on, okay? So here's what I've got right now. Then I'm gonna do another cathedral bead. Trying to decide if I want to do two cathedral beads. I think I do. I'm going to do two in between each, uh, in between each thing. Now I need to hook these links together. Okay, so let's just do that. And you can lay that. See, see what I've done? I've laid it all out. And the reason I did that is just to make sure that I don't have duplicates of certain beads right together or, you know, I, I wanted to just make sure that visually it looked like I wanted it to look so I lay it all out like this first and then I'm gonna hook everything together that way I can move them if I need to if I want to okay so there here's this next one so we've got the two cathedral beads we're gonna put him right on just like that and then I'm gonna do another piece of chain Man, that chain's tiny. Okay, now let me look at it, because I'm trying to decide if I want the two cathedral beads between each one or not. And I think, actually, I'm just going to do one. Because I want to get a lot of dangles on here, and I'm not going to be able to do that if I do two cathedral beads in between each one. So let's do one, and then we'll do our dangle back on here and our piece of chain. Okay. So just like that. Yeah, that's going to look better, I think. Then my cathedral bead. And then I need to hook my next dangle together to hang on there. So let's just hook it on. Okay. 
I've heard these bracelets called different things. I think some people call them cha-cha. Um, I like to, I think it looks more like a waterfall. <laughs> I call it a waterfall bracelet because it reminds me of cascading streams of water or something. I don't know, but they are so pretty. And they look like they're super hard. And they're really, I mean, it's not a hard bracelet to make. It's got a lot of little parts um, and a little time consuming. I mean, I sat here and made all this in less than, probably less than 20 minutes. So, you know, it's really not that time consuming, um, but it turns out so pretty. So pretty for like a dressy event. You could do this, this one, this purplish would be pretty for Valentine's Day or um, you could do reds and pinks and, I mean, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, so you'd have to get on it pretty quickly, but, um, it'd be really pretty for Christmas colors, so, and if you have trouble hanging it on the one end of the chain, just flip it, there we go. Come on, why are you, there we go, see that? It's so pretty when that's done. Okay, let's put a cathedral bead. And I'm just going to continue on down through here, attaching my cathedral beads, my link, chain, cathedral bead, link, chain, and all the way to the end. So do that until you get to the end of your bracelet and have the length that you need. And if you need to make more things to add on to get your length, go ahead and do that. But make sure you figure in the length of your toggle as well. This is going to take up about an inch to an inch and a half of the end of your bracelet. So just, you know, keep that in mind when you... Um, are stringing this okay and so get those done and come right back okay so I have all of my links and chains on here now this is still very short this is only about four inches total maybe even not that long well, by the time I get these two beads on um, it would be about four inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to string on so here's what I've got oh no put him back on there that's what you've got to make sure that your links are closed up really good because obviously he wasn't and he came right off where'd he come from right there i think yeah so just and i shouldn't have just closed that and opened it right back up but i'll just get this on here so just yeah make sure that these links that you hook on are closed up really good because that is an example of what will happen if they're not. You will have them fall right off because these are teeny tiny. This wire is very thin and uh, it'll go right through there if those aren't closed up good. I thought I had them all, but clearly I didn't. There we go. All right, so um, this is what we've got going on here. Now, um... I think because this middle part here that has all the dangles is the part that hangs on the outside right here of your wrist. And I usually, when I wear these, put it facing down so it kind of dangles over my hand like that. And so I'm just going to put the cathedral beads on the rest of this. So I'm going to take that off and just fill up with enough cathedral beads to where this middle part is just kind of the part that will hang over my wrist and the you know on the front here and the rest is just going to be beads so let me measure so this is about five inches so i need a few more on each side because my wrist is about six and a half inches and i want to be sure that this bracelet is not too big because then it's going to flop all over and i do want this part to stay kind of in the middle now, if you want to make more dangles to do the up here, you can, but I don't, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Let me put the bead bug on. And let me see if I've got about the right length here. See, that part will hang in the middle, and that's what I want. And this looks like about the right length, because by the time I put my toggle on, it'll take up the rest of that length. Okay, so, whoops, we're tangled up over here. Oh, don't come off. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is crimp. And so I'm going to stick that one back on just because I'm about to lose everything. Okay. I'm going to scoot this down a little so I know that I have enough room. Okay. Let's go ahead and crimp this end. 
Now you could use a wire guardian if you wanted to. I probably should, so let me grab a couple of those. I didn't think about that, but wire guardians are good. They just protect your um, wire from fraying, you know, with your clasp and stuff. So we're going to put our crimp on first, our crimp tube on first, okay? Then we're going to put our wire guardian on. And we're going to take our wire and come up and through here around so it's like that and then I'm just going to take my toggle and put it right on here on the wire guardian okay and then I'm taking my wire and going back through my wire guard and three or four of my beads I usually just poke it through here and see where it comes out okay so there's a couple it went through a couple there now I'm going to pull this tight now, I'm going to take my wire guard and bend it in a little. I just like to do that. I think it makes them look better. And then I'm pulling tight, okay? So I've got all this pulled up. Here's my, um, my crimp, and I'm going to take it, lay it in my crimpers in the very back little divot there, and press firmly. And what that does is it creates two little channels and your wire goes in each one. Then you turn this vertically and close it right up. Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to put my little crimp cover on. I try to hold these in my um, pliers sometimes, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's just get him on there like that. And then I'm just going to take my pliers and gently close him up and make sure that your crimp is down in there, okay? And not your wire guardian. You don't want it in there. You just want your crimp inside the cover. And these can be a little fiddly sometimes. Sometimes you can take your fingers and close them, but... I'm just making sure that the wire guardian doesn't get in there because he's trying to. There we go. That should do it. And then just gently, you may have to bend it around a little. These are um, very malleable, these little covers. So you just have to kind of work it. There we go. There's one side crimped. Okay, now I'm going to cut this off. Now, let me measure and make sure that it's not too big <laughs> because I'm notorious for that. Actually, I think it's going to be pretty perfect by the time I get this other one on. Okay, so we are going to crimp the other side. Same thing. We're going to put on our crimp tube, our wire guard, up, and over around the wire guard here. Grab it and pull. It's a little harder to do this side just because you don't have as much room to work with. And we are going to put our toggle bar on. I'm going to bend this in a little so it's just not so wide. You don't have to do that. It's totally optional. Just something I like to do. I think it makes it look a little bit better. And then we're going to put our wire back down through there go through a couple beads and see where it pops out right here. I'm going to grab it with my plier and pull everything tight. Now you want this to have a little movement so you know make sure that it's not poker stick tight. You want it kind of like this where it can bend and have a little movement but you don't want big gaps. So that's that's what you're trying to do there is just give it a little room to move you know, to have your beads kind of slide on there or just be able to bend a little bit. You don't want like a huge gap. So it's kind of a tight rope that you're walking there. You have to get it just right. Okay, I've got this in here. I am going to crimp down firmly. Turn it vertically and close it. And it did not crimp down very well. I always have trouble with the second one just because... It's just a little harder to do on your other end, but there we go. That's better. Turn it, fold it, trim this off, 
and we'll put our crop cover on. Just make sure your wire guardian's not in it. Close it up. Sometimes it's what? Oh my gosh, my wire broke. <laughs> That is unusual. I've never had that happen. I might have cut it accidentally. Okay, let me take this apart here. <laughs> I think this is going to be a restring because I don't have enough wire here. Pretty sure I do not to crimp. Oh man. Okay, well I'm going to pause the video and restring this bracelet because that was a disastrous technical difficulty but I'll be back okay so that was fun um <laughs> it's always wonderful when things like that happen on camera but I'm not going to edit it out because I want you guys to realize that those things happen to all of us okay I mean it just does I think what I did is I cut it accidentally when I was trimming my uh thread you know my um wire I think I accidentally nipped it so anyway here it is I've restrung it here it is finished and I really really love these um, they're just so fun and just dangly and unique and they get a lot of attention every time I wear them people comment on how pretty uh, that these are so anyway there's the toggle and here's the front and it does fit perfectly and I'm gonna measure this and see I mean it's a it's a a good snug fit and that's what I want with this kind of a bracelet because I don't want it running around on my wrist let me see how long it is from end to end it is uh, right up just a little more well about six and three quarters inches is what I've got here so um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please check out adornable elements beads of the month club link in my description uh, below this video and they do have a coupon so you can get 10% off of each club that you sign up for, the first month's box of each club that you sign up for. So it really is a great deal. They have all kinds of really good clubs. There are different prices, um, but you can check them out in the description box below this video. And thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.